Well, why don't you go ahead and just jump in because there's going to be some people that maybe haven't heard about you. Uh, I'd love for them to hear a little bit about your background and how you got to where you're at now. That's All always right. a good story. Like, how did you make the transition? Because you're pastoring a church, so I'm That's even right, interested yes. in knowing how you made a transition. So go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, I've been in ministry for 18 years. I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior in 1993 it was in matric it was that's our last year of high school and i was your typical jock you know sport was everything study was nowhere um i still firmly believe that my angels wrote my tests and um but in my last year i was in hostel and they had an outreach team to our school and i gave my life to jesus on that day and everything changed for me there and your your church you and your church are are really making an impact around the world so, I mean, how many how many are there now you said you you were like at 30 at one point right yeah so and we're a small congregation see, you know on, on on our list we're nearly 200 people and on a sunday we vary between 80 to 120 people in the service wow well, that's that's still quite a few. To me, that's a fairly large church in this movement. Um, yes. I haven't seen too many. You know, when we had ours in Sacramento, uh, we had 30 to 50 maybe, you know, that would show up. Mm. Um, so it's not a it's not an it is a pioneering venture for sure. Yep. Absolutely. And and that is so spot on. You cannot be focused on numbers when you want to pioneer. And, um, yeah. and that is what we've been as a church, is to constantly pioneer. And the other thing that I had to deal with is that things will constantly change. As a new creation being, you're constantly pursuing the new, so you actually never have a framework for where Jesus is taking you. It is so unsettling, so unnerving, but yet so adventurous. It is just, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. There's been a lot of conversation, a lot of teaching on immortality, and I know that you speak on that. Uh, I've also um, put out there for Luke Ag to have you on 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 his uh, immortality school. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's kind of a controversial because I mean, like the brain goes, but we die, but <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit and, and where you come from on on the topic of immortality. Well, I, no doubt, unashamedly, we are not supposed to die. Yeah. Um, the cross redeemed us from death, not partially. This is not f just from spiritual death. My whole being, spirit, soul, and body <clears throat> has been redeemed and has been put on the place of life and life in the blood so unfortunately pursuing immortality we don't really have a frame of reference you know it's a new pathway that we are um, fleshing out because you know one or two people will mention about a monk that's oming in a cave somewhere for the last 400 years Yep. That's really great, but I'd rather die and go to heaven than to park off in a cave for 400 years to prove I can live long. You know, I mean, like, what the heck? I, I can't it. agree I with you more. <laughs> I want to live it out. In the, <laughs> you know, I want to live it out in the physical world. And so I unashamedly pursue immortality. I speak to my body. I call forth the life that is in my physical body, in my age, because you rule time. Time is a capsule for you to manifest kingdom, but I'm not bound to time. I'm not bound to being limited. So immortality is something in completeness that we need to pursue. And we can't use um, our frame of reference, but who do we know that has lived for 150, 200? We've got to break away from that because immortality isn't pursuing not dying. It is pursuing your new creation being and from a position of rest, of learning to be in a place of um, completeness and that fulfillment starting to, to, to boil over. That scripture that says that we no longer identify to, with the earthly man, but with the heavenly man. 
So my heavenly body, my primordial being that is seated in with Christ in heavenly places needs to manifest here in the physical realm. I am a special creation that he made and I am. And I don't have to base it on, you know, whether I got a talk show or whether, you know, I can, uh, you know, run 14 miles or, you know, don't base it on any of that. It's not, yeah. a, you know, based on uh, what we can do. It's just based on I am and I can rest in that because if it's based on something I can do, what happens if for some reason I can't do what I think my identity is based around? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. You know, Gil, I've learned to announce to the spirit realm who I am. So yeah. when I pray and, you know, when I engage, I speak out who and what I am to the spirit realm so that the spirit realm understands I know who I am and that they need to respond because as a son of God, I've got a mandate from him and creation responds to that mandate. And, and I've also learned, I know this might rock some people's boats, but that's wonderful. But I don't ask Jesus for stuff. You know, he, he, he challenged me on it and he said, why do you keep on asking me? Don't you know that I gave it to you? 